Sun News has learned that Omar Carter will appeal his war crime convictions. Carter has admitted to murder and terror charges, and his case will be heard in a U.S. civilian federal court. Ezra Levant, host of The Source, joins us now with more. Ezra, obviously you've been following the Codger case since day one. Uh, the fact that he's applying for appeal, what do you make of that? Well, he uh, signed a confession on the advice of his lawyers, uh, basically copying a plea to everything. He said, yeah, I did it. Yes, I spied on uh, Western troops, Canadian and American troops. Yes, I, uh, I'm trained in poisons and bomb making and IEDs. Yes, I was with al-Qaeda. And yes, I murdered an American, Sergeant Christopher Spear. He made all these confessions not under duress. In fact, he had some of the most zealous anti-American lawyers uh, you could imagine. I mean, they're, they become media celebrities in Canada. He also, so he confessed all these things, and then he signed a plea deal, a plea bargain. Instead of uh, being uh, sentenced to the 40 years in prison that the jury in Guantanamo Bay handed him, he agreed that if he copped a plea, he would get out early. I mean, he's literally uh, on track to be uh, paroled as early as this year. So he lied to get the deal, and now he's saying, oh, we now, yeah, you know, I was just kidding about all that stuff. I, I didn't mean those promises I signed to you with legal advice. I'm going to appeal because uh, now I'm saying I didn't did it. Now, the, the only problem with him now denying that he did those terrorist acts is, well, we've got it on video. I mean, that's the crazy thing. Al-Qaeda made home movies of Omar Carter assembling IED explosives. Uh, we have pictures of him posing with AK-47s. And, of course, there were literally hundreds of people, both soldiers and civilians, around that fort in coast Afghanistan when he murdered Sergeant Spear. So, I mean, I think this is just part of terrorism, to terrify people. I would find it terrifying if Omar Khadr, convicted war criminal and terrorist, was free on the streets of Toronto, especially in the wake of the bombings in, in Boston and the uh, arrests in Canada. But that's what Omar Khadr does. He terrifies people. He wants to destroy us because he hates Canada, even though he was born here. Well, Ezra, you use a great word to describe the situation. Terror. Terrifying. Well, how's this for terrifying? The U.S. federal court where this case will be held, the appellate court is where it's going to be held, is a civilian court. Now, they've already overturned convictions for two al-Qaeda-related terrorists, high-profile al-Qaeda terrorists. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, again, if... If Omar Khadr is willing to kill people, and we know he is because he's confessed to it, we have witnesses, we have proof, we have videotape. If he's willing to kill people, if he's willing to commit war crimes, is he willing to lie to get out of jail? Well, the answer is, of course, if you're willing to murder someone, of course you're willing to lie, especially if you regard them as infidels and unworthy of you. I mean, he, he does not respect the authority of Canada or the United States because we are not down by Sharia law. We don't follow the Koran as our constitution. That's what he wants. I mean, he was born in Canada, given every luxury and every entitlement, but he rejected us because we're not a theocracy. So he disrespects us. So of course he's going to lie, just like he's going to kill, just like he killed before. I mean, he won when he was arrested, when he was seized in Afghanistan after murdering Christopher Spear, the first words he said to the Americans, who actually saved his life because he was wounded in the firefight, the first words he said were, F you, Americans, kill me now, because he wanted to go to heaven to get his virgins. Well, now he's even luckier, because he'll be able to blow himself up in a subway in Toronto or in an airplane in Montreal. And even if he doesn't go violent again, and no one can predict whether or not he'll go violent, I actually think he realizes that his value is much greater as a recruiter for al-Qaeda, going mosque to mosque, getting other people in jihad, and doing what his father, Ahmed Carter, did. Ahmed Carter... Um, Omar Khadr's terrorist father raised money for al-Qaeda. And I believe that Omar Khadr could go mosque to mosque in Canada, raising literally millions of dollars like his father did for al-Qaeda. Ezra, the fact that there's a great potential to re-offend in this case with a, a man like Khadr, isn't there anything that the government can do to curtail his activities should he be released from jail early? Well, he shouldn't have been brought back to uh, to Canada at all, of course. I mean, he, he should have served his 40-year prison term as the jury handed out. He should have been detained in that POW-style camp in uh in Guantanamo Bay because he, he's an al-Qaeda terrorist and we're not done with the war on terror. We didn't release German POWs uh, who were held in POW camps in Canada in the Second World War until the war was over. I mean, we just, that's the thing about POWs. You keep them detained 
until the war is done. So he shouldn't have been let go in the first place. But we did so under tremendous pressure from Barack Obama. I think that we should look at dangerous offender or terrorist offender uh, status to keep him behind bars, uh, frankly, forever. Because there are three things about Omar Carter that make him a high risk to reoffend, And this is not just according to the Pentagon, but according to Dr. Michael Wellner, a leading forensic psychiatrist who interviewed him. The first thing is he's more Islamic fundamentalist than ever. I mean, he literally memorized the Koran, led prayers in Guantanamo Bay. He, if he was zealous before, he's an over-the-top zealot now. Second thing is he has never renounce violence. He has never said I was wrong, that was the wrong way, I'm now going to find a peaceful way to promote my ideas. He's never done that. In fact, he still holds up his father, a terrorist, as a role model. And finally, look at his family. If, God forbid, he's released in Canada, who will he be released to? His mother, his sister Zainab, his mother Maha, are pro-terrorists. These are the folks who have told the media they are an Al-Qaeda family. They're the Bin Laden connection in Canada. Plus, who has he been hanging out with these past 10 years? Well, other terrorists. So you've got an increase in religious fundamentalism. You've got a total uh, lack of regret or remorse. I mean, he has no way said what I did was wrong. And his family are literally egging him on, saying he's going to continue the legacy his father started. He is a ticking time bomb, and I just can't imagine him back on the streets, who knows, surveying Jewish synagogues, looking up subways, maybe looking at the Toronto Marathon, maybe he'll do a little bombing there, we don't know, all we know is he hates us. Ezra, is there any recourse here that Canadians, uh, forget the government, that Canadians can take in order to safeguard themselves from the, the, uh, the full impact of having a terrorist released onto our streets? Well, I don't know what that would be. I mean, we made the mistake of letting him back into Canada, even though we were under no legal obligation to do so. Our Supreme Court ruled that Canada was under no obligation to take Omar Khadr back. The U.S. Supreme Court twice ruled that his detention, or not his personal detention, but the detention of um, al-Qaeda at Guantanamo Bay was legal, both Republicans and Democrats. I mean, Barack Obama and George W. Bush, they didn't agree on a lot, but they agree that Guantanamo is lawful. So all these laws were in our favor against Omar Khadr, but for some foolish political reason, we broke our, our own promise to, uh, I mean, the number one job of the Canadian government is to provide security for our own people. It's actually job one more than taxes or schools or health care. It's to protect us from war. And Al-Qaeda has declared war on us. Omar Khadr has declared war on us, and he has not stopped doing so. I, 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 what's, what's so telling here is you cannot trust Omar Khadr or anyone in Al-Qaeda, or frankly, their lawyers. Because like I say... Omar Khadr already swore on a stack of Korans that he did this. He, he signed a written confession that was approved by his hard left-wing lawyers. So this was not done under duress. His buddy said, yeah, go ahead and sign this. So his word means nothing. And if, word is, if his word about a plea deal means nothing, surely he'll hurt us again because that's his guiding motivation. He wants to destroy us. He wants to kill us. Ezra, thanks for taking time for doing this for us. And as always, we do understand that the face of terrorism comes in many guises. This is just another one of them. Thanks for this. Thanks, Brian. All right. That's the host of The Source, Ezra Levant, who joined us from his home in Toronto.